On August 25th, Hurricane Katrina became the fifth of the 2005 season, crossing into South Florida. It was a direct hit. We hadn't had one in a while. Katrina happened quickly. Everyone, you couldn't get into a grocery store here, you couldn't get to a hardware store, ran out of everything. No state gets more hurricanes than Florida. <laughs> So it should be no surprise that during the last two decades, Miami-Dade County has become a national leader in emergency management. There's a lot to protect. A $15 billion a year tourist industry based on the beaches, the Art Deco parties, the Everglades, and the busiest cruise ship port in the world. An airport that handles 35 million passengers and is America's leading gateway to Latin America. And a business community that's home to Fortune 500 companies and multinational banks. With so much at stake, Floridians have sand dunes like these to protect the coastline against the high seas and waves of a hurricane. But what these dunes can't do is protect South Florida from something that could be a lot more damaging than any hurricane. And that's a changing climate. Bouncer's dusky, bouncer's dusky. On there, bouncer. Captain Dan Kipnis is a South Florida native who spent half his life at sea as a charter boat captain and deep sea fisherman. Ready to go fishing? To Kipnis, the effects of a warming climate, like ocean acidification and more intense storms, are evident. You won't live if you can't read the ocean like you read a book. The best sailors stay alive by being able to read the ocean like you read a book. Their changes have been massive. City planners have taken notice of these changes, which include a rise in sea levels and more extreme weather events like flooding and drought, and are adopting a new approach to prepare for climate change. I think more and more we're becoming leaders in terms of climate change. So this is what my calendar of the energy workshops looks like. How many do you have? As director of the Office of Sustainability, Suzanne Torriente's job is to create a blueprint, or green print as it's being called, that prepares Miami-Dade County for the effects of climate change. Toriente, who once supervised emergency managers, is now taking Miami-Dade's leadership in emergency management and applying it to climate change. Emergency managers are very good planners and very good coordinators. Her goal is for climate change preparedness to be as much a part of Miami-Dade's planning process as is hurricane preparedness. We want this to be the new normal. You know, we, ha we want this to have a, 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 a you know, climate change, sea level rise, sustainability. Those are all eventually going to be, in, in, you know, just embedded in, in, in the county operations and the way we, we do our business. Dr. Gavin Smith of the University of North Carolina studies how communities adapt to severe weather events and climate change. He thinks Torriente is on the right track. Uh, emergency managers by the broader public are often con uh, construed as those that are predominantly first responders. Uh, the, uh, the firefighter, the police officer, the, the emergency medical technician, when in reality the true emergency manager is somebody that understands the issues of hazards, disasters, and understands a longer term view and is very good at building coalitions. Miami-Dade County is extraordinarily vulnerable to sea level rise, expected to creep up at least 18 inches by mid-century. Couple that with the area's flat topography and a water table that's close to the surface, and it's not hard to understand why city planners are concerned. Even now, at high tide, water seeps up from below ground on Miami Beach's streets. Eventually, even inland areas like the airport and the suburb of West Kendall could be inundated as salt water pushes up from below. My house, how do you protect your house when you know you're gonna have water, not necessarily coming in off the bay, but percolating up through the sand that's Miami Beach? Intruding salt water may also foul the Everglades and the vital Biscayne Aquifer that sits beneath it, the principal source of fresh water for South Florida. Throw in more intense hurricanes, droughts, and new diseases, all concerns with a warming planet, and a Tufts University study estimates that Florida stands to suffer losses topping $300 billion by the end of the century if it doesn't adapt to climate change. I think that people are still in denial about how much this is really going to cost, and it's going to cost a lot of money. Because green print is still in the planning process, Miami-Dade won't yet put a price tag on adaptation. But County Commissioner Katie Sorensen is convinced that it will be steep and the tax increases will have to pay for it. 
to live in Miami-Dade, it's a great thing to live here. We think of it as paradise, but it has a cost, and, and climate change will increase that cost, and people have to understand that. Sorensen says passing tax hikes will require buy-in from residents. It's just huge and has so many implications, and I think a lot of our community would rather just be in denial about all this. Dan Kipnis isn't in denial. He now chairs a committee that advises the Miami-Dade Climate Change Advisory Task Force. My greatest hope is, is that we say, oh my goodness, let's fix this problem. We'll live better, it'll be good for the economy, and we'll survive. To some, the dangers posed by climate change may seem a lot more remote than the threat of a hurricane on the horizon. But what Miami-Dade and other communities are finding out is that it takes the same set of skills to be ready for both. In Miami, I'm Heidi Cullen, Climate Central.